Hello people, today I'm going to make an art. And that's the whole intro, so. This is just going to be a video of me drawing while I separately record some audio, so feel free to just listen or to just watch while listening to your own music or whatever you want. I don't need to tell you that. You're smart. Do what you want. So as of last week, well, okay, I wrote this script a while ago because I'm the worst YouTuber. I have not yet actually recorded it uh, until just now, so I guess as of last month, my channel has tripled in size and my gosh thank you i did not expect that much growth in so little time and i was I, like i can't i can't i kind of can't process it still like it's so bizarre to me to see the number <laughs> oh my goodness i like i keep looking at the number and thinking that it has to be a mistake but hey hi and hello to all the new people <laughs> thank you for being here as such, I was really thinking hard about topics that I could cover that would help the arts community. I certainly see tons of questions asked on art groups and forums that I could address, but even though I would like to cover topics like finding your own art style and gaining confidence in your work, they didn't feel quite like what I wanted to talk about today. But considering how insane this year has been and how much it has negatively affected people, I wanted to address something a few of my friends and I have talked about recently. How do you create art when you feel like everything is kind of falling apart around you? How do you create when you're in emotional or mental pain? While this topic is fairly appropriate for 2020, it's something I think people have always wondered. There have always been deaths and disasters, controversies, illnesses that affect the mood and mind, arguments, angers, and so many other things that cause us to feel like creating is impossible. And that, for a lot of people, causes what we often call art block or creative block. I think the term art block, creative block, writer's block, if you're a writer, uh, is a little bit of a misnomer because it makes it feel, at least to me, like the problem is about the art itself. I think actually it's about something totally different that's happening in your life. Maybe it's something physical like not getting enough sleep or enough water. Uh, it could also be caused by something bigger in your life like stress at your job or at school or getting into an argument with someone you love or finding out that a celebrity you always liked did something terrible or that you're missing out on something you valued because of a pandemic or a natural disaster or even something that you think is stupid to be getting so worked up over that is still somehow for some reason really eating at you. If something is really bothering you, that's your body's way of telling you that it's important even if it doesn't seem like it should be. And if something is really bothering you, your mind is going to be working on that problem in the background rather than freeing you up to be creative. If you can solve that problem, do it. But very often we can't, at least not quickly. I think that's why so many people are struggling right now in particular. We see a lot of problems that impact us but that we have no power to fix and both the problems and the lack of power over them can be hard to deal with. So if you, like many of my artistic friends, find yourself struggling to create right now because of all the stressful things that you cannot change and not being able to create is distressing you, here are my suggestions. You can either step into the art or step away from the art. So option one is step into the art. You can use art as a tool to help you work through these bad feelings. Some people make really great art when they're facing adversity because that adversity gives them a subject that they want to talk about. If you aren't one of those people, you may feel like your artwork has suddenly become bad or just really difficult to make. If you have feelings about something, draw it out. If something is hurting you, draw it out. And the great part is that these therapeutic arts do not have to be good. And I encourage you to actually purposefully make them kind of bad. Take away all judgment and just draw whatever expresses your feelings. At the beginning of the event that made everyone stay indoors all year, I had a lot of feelings I couldn't express, so I drew a digital image that I actually did end up liking and sharing with others that showed how I was feeling. 
I had no words to express it, but I did have this image and seeing how many others were feeling the same way gave me some peace. If you are comfortable sharing your work, which you certainly never have to, it can be nice finding a little community of people who understand your feelings, or at least can relate on the basis of their own experiences, even if they aren't exactly the same. On a lighter-ish note, I was also a big fan of Warner Brothers cartoons as a kid, so I know for sure there is a drawing of a piano about to crush someone I was angry at floating somewhere in the archives of my childhood. That offered no real solutions, but it probably did make me feel a little better at the time. Option two is to step away from the art. It's okay to stop to just forgive yourself for being unable to produce right now and allow your artistic soul to heal. If you have the time and the ability, then just stop trying to pull from a creative well that has run dry. Instead, feed it. Go on a walk and see how many new plants you can observe. Take off your shoes, feel the dirt between your toes for the first time since you were a kid. Listen to your favorite band from your childhood or a new band that you've never heard before. Watch a documentary about a subject you're interested in. Listen to a podcast that makes you laugh. Call a friend. If none of those things sound good to you, what is something you like? More specifically, what is something that makes you feel good after you've done it? That's kind of important, actually. Taking a nap and playing video games feels good to me, personally, but when I let myself run away and do either of those things for too long, it feels like time has moved on without me and I have to slog myself along for the rest of the day to catch up with the world. It is not a feeling that I like. So while taking a long nap or playing a game for a while might work for some people, it doesn't work to inspire me because of how I feel afterward. Be honest with yourself here. What makes you feel good after you do it? Those are the kinds of things that will feed your artistic soul even if they have nothing to do with art. They open your mind to new ideas and help make connections in your brain that just might be the spark of an artistic idea that you can't stop yourself from pursuing. If what you do taps into either nostalgia or novelty, even better. And whether this takes a day or weeks or months, Forgive yourself. You and your art are separate things, and no matter how much art is a part of your life, it should not be too much of your identity. You are just as worthy and wonderful when you are not creating as when you are creating. Now, if art is a significant portion of your income, this becomes difficult to do. You may not be able to stop working, and that just adds even more stress. I get that. I am a graphic designer for my day job and I can't just stop being creative because I'm having a hard time. In this case, you will need to do smaller things like take a short walk in nature or listen to two or three songs that get you pumped or take a few long, slow, steadying breaths. <laughs> the thing you do outside of work impacts it as well. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you drinking enough water throughout the day? Are you clenching your jaw or holding your breath? Even small things can make you feel worse, which on the other hand means that even small changes can help you feel better. What you do when you aren't doing art will affect your art. You are your most valuable artistic tool. If you take care of your body and you keep it as healthy as you're able, it will work better for you even during those darker times. Now, one of my staple foods is cheese microwaved inside of a tortilla, so I am not a model health nut, but I do work hard to drink a lot of water, get enough sleep, and try to move around during the day. And I wanna be better at all these things because I want my most important artistic tool to be able to make art my entire life. There are no warranties or replacements for your body. You may find that even when outside trials are making you feel stressed, keeping your body well rested, fed, watered, may help you push your inner strength high enough to keep creating. So when you're feeling very strongly about something big or something small, something you don't have the control to fix, and it's impacting your ability to make the art you want to be making, you do have options. You can fall into the art and make something that may help you release those feelings. 
You can also step away and allow yourself to fill back up with things that inspire and excite you without judging yourself for not creating. The subject of art block in general has a lot of other solutions, but I wanted to talk about these two for now because they're the basis for what I do when I'm having difficulty creating. When I have that general feeling of ick that overwhelms me, I step away from the art. When I have a specific thing bothering me, I step into the art. And pretty much any other advice that I have for getting over art block could be listed under either of those two categories. Does adversity make you step into the art or away from it? Does it change depending on the circumstances? Do you have any other suggestions for the art community on how to continue being creative during hard times? As for the artwork you've been watching me draw, this is something else you can do, I guess. Uh, draw something you just kind of feel like drawing, even if it seems too simple or silly. I like cats and I like flowers, so I drew cats and flowers. <laughs> I haven't used a crow quill nib in a while, so I wanted to play with one. It's another thing you can do, really, is experiment with different kinds of art, things that you aren't used to or things that you haven't done in a while. I've been doing a lot of digital art lately, so going back to using a traditional medium was really good for loosening me up. And boom, an art. An art has happened. As of this video going up, the original is available in my shop, so if you're fast enough, you can, uh, you can own this baby. Check out the link in the description down below. Thank you for watching and listening. All of my social media links are in the description, and uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and all of that. I love you guys. Parasocially. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>